Now, if we take this metaphor, borrow the metaphor of political parties, and apply it to the international community, what are the two parties, and how can we describe them? Well, it's difficult to apply labels, but let me try. The United States is the leader of what I will call the elitist reform party. <laughs> Basically, it promotes democracy and individual freedom in domestic systems to the extent, we've also already referred to Kosovo, of accepting self-determination, at least in some cases, of those that want to withdraw, exercise the right of withdrawal <coughs> uh, from political systems to which they no longer want to be members. Uh, this party favors the rigorous application of universal forms, even at the expense of national sovereignty, uh, the essence of a reform party. It supports sanctions, even military intervention in some cases, to enforce those norms when they have been uh, violated. It seeks to impose conditions on the aid, on the financial transfers uh, that are made uh, to uh, the more poor parts of the international uh, community. And it is skeptical, here's the elitism, of membership organizations that have universal membership, of, of, or say of international organizations with universal membership. It believes in selective and demanding free trade areas. It still believes that alliances matter, and it often speaks of the coalitions of the willing. The other party I will call the populist conservative party. Now, if, if these things are contradictory, just go read one of John Steinbeck's lesser known works called The Short Reign of Pippin IV, which <laughs> talks about French politics in the 1950s, where he talks about the Christian atheists, yeah. which is my favorite name for a, a mixed up political party. This one I'm calling the, <laughs> the populist conservatives. And China, along with Russia, is one of the leaders of this party. This party promotes not democracy and individual freedom, but rather it calls for stability, harmony, and order uh, in domestic systems, as conservative parties usually do. And it believes very firmly in the notion of territorial integrity against the uh, fractious tendencies of, uh, of uh, self-determination and independence movements. It holds sovereignty, upholds sovereignty, and cultural and political diversity against the application of universal norms. It's reluctant to apply sanctions except in extreme cases or after failed attempts at dialogue, which says it should always come first. It opposes most forms of conditionality on development assistance in the third world, and it favors <coughs> universal membership organizations. It likes looser free trade agreements. It believes in cooperative security uh, organizations as opposed to formal alliances especially if they are defined against, uh, uh, against uh, enemies. Now, the irony of all of this is that in some ways these two political parties, because they are operating in a sense both domestically and internationally, are actually talking past each other. They apply different principles <coughs> to different levels of the system, but in ways that mirror image each other. The United States favors democracy at the national level but favors benign hegemony at the international level. It believes in order. It believes in basically a single core state that, that provides that order and uh, security against the anarchy that it argues would come without it, while at the same time promoting democracy among the various constituent nation states that make up the system. China argues the opposite. It favors democracy at the international level. It opposes hegemony unilateral rule of the United States, while arguing for hegemony, once again presumably benign at the national level, again in the name of order and security, uh, which is what those who argue for hegemony always, that's the value they always uh, invoke. The United States accuses China in this ongoing political debate of being irresponsible, of protecting uh, the rule breakers in the name of sovereignty whereas China accuses the United States of being unilateralist and interventionist, let alone of being hypocritical, of applying norms and values to others that it does not accept for itself. My key conclusion here to wrap up is that there is indeed an emergent or embryonic international community, but it's characterized not only by economic competition and to some degree the possibility of military competition, but also by political competition over the priorities to be assigned to common norms and values. 